Hello everybody, I'm glad to be back to cover more exciting news, and you best believe there's enough of them. Let's start off by catching up though, since we've missed a couple of days. If you have been paying attention on other channels or watched these live streams, you should be up to date on how the area looks like, but there is some new data to talk about. The eruption has now become a part of our daily lives here in Iceland. It's not talked about as much, and we get occasional warnings if the gas pollution is going to make itself apparent. You American viewers are probably familiar with seeing the eruption featured on Good Morning America a little over a week ago. Great to see how much attention it's getting. And if you've not completely lost track of time, you've probably noticed that the eruption turned one month old. Over 10 days ago. Time flies. But yeah, the eruption here in Kentigadalur, originally said to last maybe two weeks when it was first seen and analyzed, is now one month old and still coming strong. Fissures have begun to close, but that is no sign of the eruption coming to a halt. We'll talk about that in the data and details section. First, let's check on the most recent news. As of the making of this video, signs of a possible new fissure opening have emerged. A lot of smoke is coming from the ground and both experts and people watching the live streams are not sure if it's smoke coming from burning vegetation or a new fissure about to open. The gas pollution was at the high yesterday at the eruption site, leaving a few people in serious condition and a dozen more feeling discomfort due to the gas. It said that they were not following instructions and the people who did follow instructions were unscathed. The most active fissure event has picked up a strange pulse effect where the activity is minuscule for two minutes and then it suddenly gets very violent, spewing magma jets more than 100 meters in the sky. It's been recorded to reach 300 meters. It does that for the next eight minutes and then the cycle repeats. Now we should be caught up with all that's been going on, so let's see what data we have. The eruption here in Iceland has been very stable during its one month lifespan in terms of lava flow. There have been of course exciting visual occurrences, but they seem to have reached a stable point now. A new earthquake area sprung up a few days ago in a different area called Hengil. The largest earthquake was 3.8 in magnitude and was felt in the capital. It is over 50 kilometers away from the eruption in Keldingadalir, meaning that these earthquakes are not related to that. What's even more interesting is that Hengil volcano system is not really connected to the ones on Reykjaneska Peninsula. It's also different in many ways, with one of the main differences being that it has a magma chamber. Hengil, which erupts roughly every 2000 years, last erupted 2000 years ago. So it's time. More about Geldingadalir. As I said earlier, the eruption is super stable. The lava flow seems to be sitting at around 6 to 8 cubic meters per second, but the scientists and experts have yet to make a new measurement and publish it. Here you can see a near infrared image of the eruption site taken from a satellite, revealing the lava pools and rivers. How much area has the lava covered now? Well, here's a pretty nice comparison of Iceland's latest eruptions and the lava produced. You can see that the eruption in Geldingadalir is definitely the smallest one of the five. Hekla, which is a huge explosive eruption, produced 15 times more lava in 12 days than the eruption in Geldingadalir has in 30 days. And the big grey area you see is the lava produced by Holhraun in 2014-15, which was a fissure volcano like the one in Geldingadalir. That was all of the most recent data. What does it say about the future? The situation in Hengil is nothing we can be touching on now. The evidence is too weak. But we can, on the other hand, take a look at Geldingadalir and its recent events. Currently, there is only one fissure that seems to be active, at least visually. It is believed that some of the other fissures are still producing lava that just flows in tubes underneath the site. Is another fissure opening soon? Well, if the previously measured 15 cubic meters per second of magma being pumped into the dike is still present, means that there is still room for more fissures to open, and it might happen soon. We're yet to receive updates on the lava flow, 
and it might well be that the eruption has reached the stability point, where an equal amount of magma is being pumped into the tank and lava being spewed out, which means no more fissures will have to open. Hope we'll get that data soon. Anyways, I'm glad to be back. Hope you enjoyed the video, and if so, why not leave a like so others can see it too. Hope to see most of you next time. Thanks for watching.